good. Get the PowerPoint up. Even though it says Wednesday, it is for today. All right, so reminders. Um, test is next week, Wednesday. Um, the material we go over today will not be on the test. Um, um, as always, look in the test to folder on Blackboard to see what material will be on the test, uh, what material you need to know. I will be providing an equation sheet, so I'll be writing that this weekend most likely. I'll put that on, on Blackboard for you to print out. It'll have all the equations you need to know, all the constants you need to know, and I'll have a periodic table for you. The test will be just like uh, test one. Um, make sure you have that proctor you, if you, if you deleted the proctor you uh, browser extension, just make sure you re-download it. Um, and we're, it's gonna be like the same thing. Um, same way of doing uh, test one. Anyways, what we're talking about today is that is the ideal gas law. So on Wednesday, we talked about three individual laws, uh, Boyle, Charles, and uh, Avogadro. Um, those laws have been combined into one law called the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is basically telling us how gases behave ideally. Um, by ideal, I mean like if gases didn't um, interact with their environment, like if they didn't see each other and didn't crash into each other, this is how they would react. Now, the ideal, ideal gases don't exist in reality. But using the ideal gas law under normal conditions, that is under conditions of like nearly one atmosphere, um, the results that you get are pretty much the same results you get when calculating these constants for real gases. So it's a very accurate approximation of how gases behave under normal conditions. Um, and by normal, like I said, not high pressure, not low pressure, not like extreme temperatures. There, the ideal gas law breaks down. But if we're talking about one atmosphere near room temperature-ish, uh, the ideal gas law is fine. Now, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Pressure times volume equals the number of moles, so that's N, uh, R, which is a constant, times T temperature. Now, there are a lot of different constants for R, and I'm just giving you two here, right? So um, you don't have to memorize R. R I'll always give to you. What, what you need to look out for, though, is that R, the value of R changes depending what units we're in. So when using the ideal gas law, Make sure your pressure and volume units match up to the R constant. Um, just for an example here, this top value um, is liters atmosphere. So when you're doing PV equals NRT, volume must be liters, pressure must be atmospheres. For this second val uh, uh, value rather of um, the ideal gas constant, we have liters and kilopascals. So just make sure your volumes and liters um, and your pressure is kilopascals. All right, temperature will always be in Kelvin. Uh, the amount of moles will always be moles. So just make sure we're in Kelvin and we're in moles for that. So let's get started here. Um, just using the ideal gas law, and I'll rewrite it down again. Uh, PV equals NRT. So if I have a 10 liter cylinder full uh, filled with 0.448 moles of nitrogen gas at a temperature of 315 Kelvin, what is my pressure? So that's what we're gonna start with, just a little warm up exercise. So see if you can calculate that uh, given the information below. And 
And while you do that, one thing I did want to point out, um, for the ideal gas law, we actually don't care what gas we're working with. Um, N, whoops. Okay. So N, which is number of moles, there's no way to determine like what gas that is. So when doing the ideal gas law, we actually don't care about what gas we have. It's just how much of a gas do we have? It could be any gas. It can be a combination of gases. So just rearranging the ideal gas law will look like that. Pressure equals NRT divided by V. Um, R is a constant, so it will never change based on what units you're using. Correct. The only way R changes is if you change the units of R. So like there's 20 different like R's out there. You just pick one that goes along with the units that you want. So this is a um, fairly easy uh, warm-up problem. We just have to decide which variables go where. So what is the pressure? So that's what we're asking. What's P, right? In a 10 liter vo uh, volume, so that's my volume, filled with 0.448 moles, so that's my N, temperature of 315K, so that's my T, R is given. So, so let's plug this in. Pressure equals 0.448 times 8.314 times 315 divided by 10. And let me just double check that I did my calculation right there. I have it written down, but I did that very first thing this morning. So who knows if I was groggy or not, 0.448 times 8.314 times 315 divided by 10. Yep, 117 kilopascals. All right, so to figure out what the unit is, look at R. So again, our, our um, unit of pressure for this value of R is kilopascals. So our answer should be in kilopascals. We only use the number in the R equation. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by we only use the number in the R equation. Uh, so on the equation sheet, when we do test three, I'm going to give you all the possible R's that we use. You just have to pick the right one. Um, and it's kind of obvious which one you use in that I will give you the units that go with that R, right? You just have to look at what units are on the problem or what units I'm asking for. So you'll be given R's. I'll probably have like two or three on there. And you have to decide which one are the correct units, yes. Okay. So, um, Moving on to the next one. So that's how we use the ideal gas law. Pretty straightforward, just uh, good old plug and chug algebra, as they say. Here's a little more complicated question to make sure we really have it. So I like to draw pictures. So I'll draw you a picture of what's going on. 
So I have a weather balloon. Here's my nice little balloon. The volume of this balloon is 28.5 liters. Pressure, oh, and there's a typo here. This should be 760 millimeters of mercury. Pressure is 748 torr or millimeters of mercury. Temperature equals 28 C. Now this balloon rises 25,000 feet. Now, when this balloon rises, the pressure is now 385 torr. Temperature is minus 15 degrees C. I wanna know what my new volume is. R is given to you. Oops, kinda uh, crossed out R there. R is given to you. Make sure we're in the right units. All of our units match up before we plug in our equation. Our equation is PV equals NRT. Um, and what you should really do is just figure out, okay, what variables am I missing in the ideal gas law? Uh, ideally, well, when you solve the ideal gas law, you have to have only one unknown, right? So, so let's see if we can work through this. This one, um, it takes a little bit of thinking. So that's why I think it's a good practice. So uh, let's see if you can figure out what's going on um, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll let, uh, I'll give people uh, a couple minutes to uh, work through this. If we have all the R's on the equation sheet, how to tell which one to use? Um, it depends on what units you want to use it with, right? Um, you have to look at your problem, see what units I give you in the problem and match that up. Um, because when using the ideal gas law, your, your volume and your pressure have to match up. The units of the volume and your pressure that you want to use have to be the same units as the gas constant, right? So that's, that's how we're going to figure it out. Um, like for example, I give you um, pressure and atmosphere or uh, tor here. I just kind of gave you the answer, but your gas uh, constant R is an atmosphere. So you need to convert from tor to atmospheres. If you try to plug in 748 to this equation, the ideal gas law equation, um, you will get the incorrect calculation. And same for the temperature. If you haven't noticed yet, I gave you the temperatures in Celsius. The gas constant is always in Kelvin. So we need to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Remember how to do that? It's Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. So the conversions, pressure, we don't want 748 torr we want 0.984 atmospheres. So I'm just converting from millimeters of mercury to tor, or millimeters of mercury to atmosphere. And same, I don't want 28C, I want 301K. My second part, 
385 torr, that is useless for us. We want to be in atmospheres because that's what the gas, or we want to be in atmosphere because that's what the gas law is in. That's 0 0.507 atmospheres. And my temperature, we don't want to be in minus 15. That's 258K. How did I convert to atmospheres? Um, using this conversion right here. One atmosphere is 760 torr. 748 torr. 760 torr is one atmosphere. Uh, this, the atmosphere to torr will um, be given. That You don't have to memorize one atmosphere, 760. And I did the same thing for 385 over there. So I'm sure some of you, when getting this problem, you're tempted to just calculate uh, volume for my second condition over here, which is, you know, legitimate in that that's what the uh, question is asking you. Calculate the volume of this balloon at that altitude. So if I do that, PV equals NRT, I get 0 0.507, that's my pressure, atmospheres, multiplied by V, now N, N's number of moles. How many moles do we have in this balloon? How many moles of gas? Where do I tell you how many moles of gas do we have? R is given. R and T is 258, so times 258. By uh, looking at the conversion factor, can it help us when looking for what units that we're trying to work with? Yeah, when you're looking at R, that'll tell you what units to be in. If I don't give you a specific R, the units in the problem um, will tell you. Will we be using helium? You can. You can use helium. You can use hydrogen. You can use neon. You could use um, gaseous iron if you wanted. Um, the ideal gas law does not matter what gas you use. That's one of the drawbacks of the ideal gas law. Who can tell me? How many moles are in our balloon? Or where do we even find that information? How many moles in my balloon? N equals 0.8528. Um, I did not get that. Is this standard temperature and pressure? No, we are not at STP. Standard temperature and pressure is one atmosphere at zero C. Would we convert liters to grams into moles? You cannot convert liters to grams without a density. And I did not give you a density. 1.14 moles, hey, there we go. It is 1.14. So this question is complicated in that I don't specifically tell you what you need to do. So if you try, so the question that we're trying to solve is, well, what is the volume in condition two? And the, the thing is, when you try to solve PV equals NRT, you'll find that you have two variables that are unknown, volume and number of moles, okay? And 
if you only have one equation, uh, my internet is, okay, there we go. So if you only have one equation and two unknowns, you cannot solve those two unknowns. However, let me get rid of my little it. We all float down here, Georgie. Okay, if I go to state one, and if I do PV equals NRT, pressure is 0.984, okay? Volume is 28.5, okay? N, I never tell you N, so that's an unknown, but I do tell you R, because you'll always know R, and temperature. So this is one of those problems that um, is like one of those critical thinking problems, as in to really solve it, you have to sit down and understand what is going on. I have a balloon and all I'm doing is changing the temperature and the pressure around this balloon. I'm never changing the amount of moles. So if I give you two states to this balloon, state one and state two, they have the same number of moles of gas because I never change the amount of moles of gas. So we solve for N. So N equals PV divided by RT, N equals 1.14 moles. How do we know when to use PV equals NRT or P equals NRT divided by V? Those are the same equations, actually. PV equals NRT is the same thing as P equals NRT divided by V. It's actually the same thing as V equals NRT divided by P. Um, all, all the, the only difference here is that I'm dividing each side by V, right? So you use this equation if I'm solving for pressure because I have pressure on one side of the equation. You use this equation if you're solving for volume. You use N equals PV divided by RT if I'm solving for number of moles. Um, you, just, you just try to get the variable alone that you don't have. Okay, so now that we have that 1.14, I can plug it into my second state. So N here is actually 1.14. And when I solve for volume, I get volume equals, um, so it's gonna be, NRT divided by P, which is given in my previous steps. And I get, I got 47.5 atmos, no, sorry, liters, liters, liters. This is a volume. So 47.5, 47.6, all close enough. So there's the ideal gas law in a, question that's actually a little bit more complicated. And so question one is a question where I'm just asking, do you know the ideal gas law? Question two, that's where, you know, we're getting at that critical thinking. Like, can you do some critical thinking problem solving for me where you have to realize you have to solve for number of moles first to get to your volume. So there, a question like this on a test, I would not just be testing, do you know the ideal gas law? I'm testing your ability to think and reason as well in solving these problems. Um, what numbers do I use exactly? So I used um, pressure is, all right, let me see here. So I use number of moles being 1.1356 because I didn't round. So my number of moles was actually 1.1356. Temperature is 258. Gas is 0.08206. Pressure is 0.506579. So I did not round. So if you're getting something like 47.6, 47.7, 47.4, 47.5, 47.6, that's because um, I didn't round um, when, when solving this. If you're getting something like 44, that's not a rounding error. 
So yeah, n was oh, 1.1356 t 258 uh, pressure 0 0.506579 r 0 0.08206. Any other questions about um, a problem like this? If not, um, we will move on to our um, next topic here. And that's the idea of molar volume and STP or standard temperature and pressure. So molar volume is, if I have one mole of a gas, how much volume does one mole of a gas occupy? And again, with the ideal gas law, it does not matter what gas we have, right? So if you're looking at oxygen, if you're looking at hydrogen, if you're looking at zinc gas, um, radon gas, under the ideal gas law, one mole of that gas will take up the same volume, right? And the second idea we have is standard temperature and pressure, STP. Um, whenever you see STP, all this means is that temperature is 273 Kelvin and the number of mole, are, are sorry, and, and the pressure is one atmosphere, right? So 273 Kelvin is actually zero centigrade. Now, if we calculate molar volume at STP, we take our PV equals NRT equation and we're solving for volume. So all we do is we divide each side by P and we get volume equals number of moles, gas constant, temperature divided by pressure. So at STP, molar volume is 22.4, all right? Now, this is an error I've seen a lot when I'm talking about this concept and this slide specifically. At different temperatures and pressures, molar volume will not be 22.4. Molar volume is only 22.4 at STP. Any other temperature, any other pressure, molar volume changes because molar volume depends on what temperature and pressure you're at, right? So just know molar volume is how much volume one mole of stuff takes up. And STP just means 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere of pressure. So let's, let's, um, try this question out, right? What is the volume of 33.6 grams of neon at STP? Again, STP. And I give you the ask, uh, a, a gas constant. So please determine the volume of 33.6 grams of neon. So I'll give everybody a, a minute or two to figure that one out. Hint, hint, if you do not have a periodic table out, this question is going to be a little bit difficult.
Okay, so if you haven't figured out the secret to this problem yet, um, remember the gas law, PV equals NRT. N stands for number of moles. And I give you grams. So you need to convert from grams to moles. And remember, the way we convert from grams to moles is molecular weight. So we look on the periodic table for the molecular weight of neon. Neon has a molecular weight of 20.180 grams per mole, right? So I need to figure out how many moles is 33.6 grams of neon. So 33.6 grams of neon. I have 20.180 grams of neon for every one mole of neon. Grams cancel out. I'm left with moles. And this is 1.67 moles of neon. Now I should have everything I need to calculate uh, volume. So I'm going to rearrange my equation to volume equals NRT divided by P or 1.67 times 0 0.08206 times uh, 273, all divided by one. My volume is 37.3 liters. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the calculation I did to get the number that I got. Um, Questions about that? And I'll just double check while I'll just redo the calculation super quick while you might be asking your questions. So if you have a question about that, please feel free to ask. Yeah, 37.4 now that I redid it. So um, 37.3, 37.4, all good. Right, so if there's no questions about that, then we'll move on to our, um, our next thing. And that is density of a gas, all right? So to calculate density of a gas, you take the molar mass of that gas, which is found in the periodic table. So helium, the molar mass is four. Nitrogen gas, which is N2, the density, uh, molar mass is 28.02. You then take your molar mass and divide it by your molar volume. Again, just as a refresher, molar volume is the volume of one mole of gas. Um, so I did have a question. Why wouldn't we plug in the zero of 1.00? I do not understand that question. Why, why wouldn't we plug in the zero of 1.00? Okay. Not sure I understand that. So see if you can reword that question because I'm not sure what the zero of 1.00 is. Um, anyways, so we take our density and we do molar mass divided by molar volume with the volume of one mole of gas, right? At STP, as we talked about, only at STP is the molar volume of 22.4. So you can see at STP, helium has a much less density than neon gas. Uh, neon makes up like 70 something percent of the atmosphere. 
right? So most of the air we breathe is not neon gas, nitrogen gas. So basically anything that has a less density than nitrogen gas will float. So that's why like a Zeppelin, which is full of hydrogen gas will float. Or you can also put hydrogen or, yeah, so Zeppelins are full of helium gas. Um, you can put hydrogen gas in there, but what will happen and has happened is that they'll like blow up when they crash. Well, helium is inert and so it doesn't blow up. But basically, if you are less dense than, than air, you float. If you're more dense, you sink. Is molar volume always gonna be 22.4? Molar volume's only 22.4 at STP. Any other conditions, that is not the case. Only at STP is it 22.4. Um, so, so keep that in mind. If I give you any other temperature or any other pressure, you have to recalculate molar volume. Again, molar volume is what is the volume if I have one mole of gas? So question four, what is the density of hydrogen gas at 20 C in a pressure of 1,655 PSI? There's your R and there's a conversion from PSI to atmosphere. And again, density is molecular weight divided by molar volume. So density of a gas is that. So what, what is this? So I'll give everybody a um, couple minutes to try and work through what is the density of hydrogen gas if we're at 20 C and 1,655 PSI. So again, as with all problems we've done today, um, we want to make sure the units we're using are the same as the units in our gas constant, or we can't do this calculation, right? So I give you a pressure in PSI in our gas constants in atmospheres. And so we have a conversion here. So when we do test three, uh, when we get a problem like that, it's not gonna be so obvious that you have to do this. Um, like, 
like I'll give you an equation sheet with all all the all the stuff like this on it. So it wouldn't be right under the question. So we're just training to see. Um, yeah, it seems like my internet's going in and out now. We are just training to, to uh, get our minds ready, to train our minds saying, you know, look at the gas constant, make sure my units match up to that gas constant. Right. So my gas constants in atmospheres, my pressures in PSI. So I need to convert that. 16.55 PSI. 14.7 PSI is one atmosphere. PSI cancels out. And our pressure is 112.585 atmospheres. So we're talking about a gas that is under a pressure of 112 times that of, of um, what we feel here at sea level. Um, so it's very, very high pressure. Yeah. So we need to calculate molar volume. Remember, molar volume is volume of one mole of gas. Well, we can calculate that easily enough. PV equals NRT. So if my pressure, so I'm solving for volume. So let me just rearrange that. Volume equals NRT divided by P. Again, if I'm trying to solve for a variable, that variable needs to be by itself. So volume equals N, number of moles. Well, if this is molar volume, N is one, right? It's the volume of one mole of gas. So one times my R constant, 0 0.08206, times my temperature. All right, temperature is in Celsius. My gas constant's in Kelvin. I need to change that. Again, 273 plus C equals Kelvin. So if I'm at 20 plus 273, uh, my temperature in Kelvin is 293. Right. So that's my temperature divided by my pressure, which is uh, 100, there it is, 112.585. And so my molar volume um, for, for this scenario equals uh, 0 0.213559 liters. Um, sig figs, so... Um, this this it doesn't have sig figs, so this is four sig figs, uh, no sig figs. Uh, this would be three sig figs, so it should just be zero point two one four liters. All right, so that's my molar volume. Uh, so any questions about how I got molar volume? So now we can just go on to solve it because molecular weight of hydrogen, you just look that up on the periodic table. Molecular weight of hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole, uh, molar volume is 0 0.214 uh, uh, liters per mole. Moles cancel out, you know, left with grams per liters, which is 4.72. So, so under these conditions, for every liter of hydrogen gas you have, that's 4.72 grams of hydrogen gas. So the, so yeah, so molar volume, the units of molar volume are liters per mole. How many liters of stuff 
can I have per, per mole of gas? And molecular weight is grams per mole, so the moles will cancel out and you'll be left with grams per liters. All right, any questions on anything I did there? Again, this, although we're just using the ideal gas law, which is a simple equation by itself, PV equals NRT, you can see there's a lot of ways we can use that equation to ask a lot of different questions about gas, to calculate a lot of different properties of gas. Um, so if, if I lost you at any point of that explanation, if you just feel like totally confused, like how did you do, what, 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 um, please do let me know. Um, that's the only way um, I can really help um, is that if you let me know. And as always, if you don't want to share with the class, that's fine. You can always send me a private message or an email will also, also work if you want to ask outside the class or if you're watching this on the YouTube. Always, always feel free to send me an email. Okay, if there's nothing, I will clear this then. Go to our last problem here. Okay, so here, again, it's a little bit of a uh, complicated question, but we're using the ideal gas law again. So PV equals NRT. So here I have a sample of gas. The gas has a weight of 38.8 mg or milligrams. The volume is 224 milliliters. My temperature is 55 C and my pressure is 886 torr. What gas is this? Or what is the molar mass of this gas? Another way I can ask is what gas is this? So you're trying to find me grams per mole. Again, that's what molar mass is. I give you grams, well, I give you milligrams. I give you a volume. I give you a temperature. I give you a pressure. See if you can use all that information to give me grams for moles. So we are running out of time here. So I'm gonna actually speed this up a little bit. Um, as always, when using R, make sure all the units that you have match up to that. So our R units in atmosphere, but our pressures in tor. So I need to convert that from tor to atmospheres. And that is 1.14 atmospheres. Our volumes in milliliters, I need to be in liters, so milliliters, 1,000 milliliters in one liter, which is 0.224 liters. Our temperatures in Celsius, I need that in Kelvin. So 55 plus 273 equals 328. Kelvin. So those are just the conversions we need to do to make sure we're in the right units. Now PV equals NRT. So um, I need to find out if given a pressure, given a volume, given a temperature, how many moles of gas this is. So when, when we figure this out, what we see is that the only constant we don't have is n. Uh, 3.28, right? So that is always a good thing to do when doing ideal gas law problems. Write out what variables you know, and you will see what variable you don't know. For atmosphere, you got 1.16. Um, 
So it could have been I did like eight. Oh, I did 866 divided by, that's why I got something wrong. All right, so I did a miscalculation. So it should be like 1.166 atmospheres. Um, so my number is gonna be a little off, but I'll show you how to do it. So when we plug all this in, we're gonna solve for N. So N equals PV divided by RT. Again, all I'm doing is rearranging that equation. P is 1.14, volume 0 0.224, R given 0 0.08206, T328. And when you solve for this, um, N, again, my number is going to be a little, little off. I got N equals like 0 0.009487 moles. So all I did was look at my problem, see what variables I had, see which one I didn't have, which was moles. So solve for moles using the ideal gas law. Now I can find molar volume because I have something in moles and I have something in grams. Or sorry, not molar volume, molar mass. Molar mass equals 0 0.0388 grams. Again, that conversion I just did 38.8 milligrams, so there's a thousand milligrams, one gram. Divided by how many moles I have. And you should get four something. I should have figured out this morning when I was doing it, my number was off. Like when I use my numbers, I get 4.089 grams per mole. The way this problem was originally set up is that you should have got something like 4.003 you can find out this gas is healing up. But again, reading this problem I know is really confusing and you might not even know exactly, you might know what I'm asking, but you might not know how to tackle this. So my advice for you when doing word problems like this, right? is write down every variable you do know, right? We know a weight, we know a volume, we know a temperature, we know a pressure. And hopefully when you do that, you'll see that you don't know N, which is number of moles, right? So that's the one variable we don't know. But we have an equation that for a gas, we can find out N as long as we have pressure, volume, R, and temperature, which we do. So once we figure that out, we can see what units we have to be in based on our gas constant and do the conversions as necessary. Then solve for N, which is um, number of moles. That's my, as my internet again, kind of craps out there. We solve for N, which is number of moles. From there, molar mass is grams per moles. Well, I give you a weight in grams. You just solve for moles. Divide the two to get your answer. All right. Any, any last minute questions about that? Um, and if you have questions while you're typing it out, let me just go through my normal spiel. Homework, I will put a homework up for um, today. Uh, test is on Wednesday. I will probably make another announcement about Proctor U so you don't forget about that and you can test your system. Um, make sure you test your system, that's good to go. I'll give you 24 hours to do the test again. Please, please, please don't wait till 11.30 p.m. because you might run into problems. Um, and yeah, so please do try to do it early. October when? What's today, the 9th? Two days ago was the 7th, so that's October 14th. Oh, Sam, two contents from 9, 8, through when? October 7th. Um, all, all of those PowerPoints should be found in the test two folder. Um, if you have any questions, so again, as always, when, when studying for the test, go back through our slides and make sure you can do the problems, make sure you understand the problems. If you don't understand the problems and you want more practice, let me know, I can give you more examples. Um, email me and we can work stuff out. This PowerPoint is not on the test. This is test three material. Yep. So the test two cutoff was um, Wednesday. 
Yep. Um, so ideal gas law will be the first topic on test three. All right, so if there's no questions, um, hope you all have a good weekend. Make make use of your time if you can um, to, to study. Um, otherwise, hope you all have a uh, good weekend. All right, take care everybody.